Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use local authentication inside your Expo React native apps. So what local authentication is, is basically Face ID, Touch ID or PIN access. What you're going to want to do first is if you're going to provide iOS as an app, you're going to want to add to the info plist inside your app.json under the iOS section and you're just going to provide an NS Face ID usage description. Basically, when you open the app for the first time, it's going to say this app is using Face ID for this reason and the user will be able to allow that um, and so it can use the Face ID to authenticate the user. Um, why you would use local authentication is you might want to have some sensitive information, but it might be something that you are not, um, that's sort of stored locally or not something that you need to have your own authentication for and so that's why you might use the face id or touch id or pin to authenticate the user and allow them to access that sensitive data i know banks and stuff will use it um, to then gain access to use their um authenticate their own custom authentication um but it sort of saves the user a bit of effort having to type in like long highly secure app passwords. So I'm running my app now and I've got my default app here and I've already installed the Expo local authentication package. I'm going to use effect because I'm wanting to check whether the um, whether local authentication is available. So if local authentication isn't available then you won't be able to sort of um, see And I'm also going to import from that Expo local authentication package so that I can um, perform that local authentication. So inside that use effect, what I'm going to do is I am going to go local authentication. and I'm going to authenticate asynchronously. What that's going to do is it's actually just going to go ahead and it's going to um, it's going to go ahead and actually make that authentication call depending on what authentication is available for the user. So if there's no touch ID or face ID or use pin and if there's no face ID or use touch and if it's if there is face ID you'll obviously use face ID. So I'm just creating an async function inside my use effect and that's because I can't add async to the use effect um, parameter as it doesn't have a return, like it doesn't expect there's a return. So I need to handle that um, and I'm just going to call this local authentication authenticate async and then I can just use that result as I wish. So you can see that I've got this error here, keyguard manager is device secure returns false. So if I open up the terminal, I can see the error in full. Um, what that basically means is that I haven't actually set up anything to secure my device. So there's actually no local authentication that exists. So there's no need to authenticate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a pin for my Android, I'm just going to set it to 1965. Do the same again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my app. And I'm going to reload it. And you can see it asks me to authenticate. If I enter the correct pin, it should log me in. And if I entered the incorrect pin, then it should let me know that I've entered the incorrect pin. So let's go ahead and display some sensitive data depending on the result. So I just want to console.log the result to you guys so you can sort of see what the result would look like um, for a successful or unsuccessful authentication. So here I am just logging in successfully. And basically it's just an object with success true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use state here 
And the reason I'm using state is if the user has authenticated, I'm going to want to show on screen the um, message that is secure. So I've got two values here. The first is, is authenticated, which is my state variable. And I'm going to set that to false by default. That's the value I've passed to use state. And then the second is my function for actually setting that state variable. And once that's set, it's going to trigger um, my UI to reload and re-render. So here I'm just going to change this text out. I'm just going to check um, whether the user is authenticated. And if they are, I'll just show the secure string here. So there's like secure storage in um, Expo React Native. And so you might want to use something like that if you have some sensitive information you want to step, store. And you might go fetch that at this stage. Or you might call your API with like an OAuth token. You might refresh that OAuth token and call an API at this point once the user has shown you that they are in fact the correct user of the phone. So here we go, if I log in, it'll show me here's some sensitive info. And if I go ahead and reload that, I'll just show you a failure as well. It'll just tell me wrong pin. But if it does eventually dismiss, so I'll just try a few times. Okay, so if you manage to dismiss this successfully, like so, then you can see that it says access denied because you cancelled the authentication. And so it doesn't know that you're the authenticated user um, and it won't let you access the sensitive information. Now I'm going to show you it on iOS. So the reason I'm showing you on iOS is it actually is really easy to sort of test the um, features. So you can test quite easily. Um, first, I'm just going to enter the iPhone passcode. And it will give me my sensitive information. Um, but it's also really easy to configure Touch ID and Face ID. So if you want to configure Touch ID and Face ID, all you have to do is go to Features. And if it's a Touch ID device, you can just um, set to Enrolled right there. And if it's a Face ID, then it would show Face ID there. Once you've got that, it'll pop up on screen, that Touch ID option. And once again, if you open that Simulator menu, Features. You can choose whether to do a matching touch or a non-matching touch. If you do a non-matching touch, it will fail. And if you do a matching touch, it will show you that sensitive information once again. So now I'm going to open up a different device. Um, the reason I'm opening a different device is I want to show you that it would work with Face ID as well, which is actually using that usage description. So this one hasn't had that feature enabled of Face ID yet, but you can do it from that same features area and just reload. So the reason it's not working is that you actually need to build your um, own standalone Expo app. So I've provided that description in the app.json, but I actually need to go and actually configure my build profile. So I'll just run this ES, EAS build configure, and I'm going to specify that I want to create it for all. 
And once that's done, I can go to that eaes.json. For development, I'm wanting to set the iOS simulator to be true. That will just allow me to create a um, folder which will have the app file that I can drag across to the iPhone simulator and it will just install very easily. So I've set the simulator to true inside the iOS. And then once you've got that, you can go ahead and do your build. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to install Expo Dev Client. That's basically something that will allow you to run your standalone application. I'm just going to add a comment here just explaining all the different steps for building your standalone application so that anyone who wants to look at my source code um, can easily find it. So this is only required for testing Face ID as that's what requires that um, NS Face ID usage description. So like I said, you just want to install that Expo Dev Client and I'm just going to provide some instructions on installing the EAS build tool if you haven't already done that um, and some commands for building the app. You also need, may need to install a few things like npm, yarn and fastlane and you also have to, will have to install brew if you don't have that. All those commands should be pretty easy and then you can follow the instructions on those URLs to actually install the app on your device. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build and I'm going to build on the actual um, Expo website. The reason for this is I haven't actually finished configuring my own computer to use it locally. Um, so what that does is it'll give you this URL here where it's being built and I can just go ahead and open that in a new window. You'll have to log in first, so just enter your username and password. And then you can see that it's got this simulator build here and that it's sort of running already. I'm just going to leave this for now to run and then I'll come back and show you once it's done. Because so it can take a little while, I think about 10 minutes at times. So once it's done, you just download that tar.gz file and if I open up that and drag it across, you can see it's installed this app here and it's saying I need to run this expo start dash dash dev client command and then I'll be able to view the app inside this standalone application. So now that I've got that, I can just go ahead and open that on iOS and it's going to um, show me my um, usage description and allow me to approve or deny that. I'm going to allow it because obviously I want to show you this working. If you don't allow it, it'll fall back on something like the actual pin entry. So now that I've got that face ID there, I can choose matching or non-matching face. If it's non-matching, it's not going to show me the sensitive data. And if it's matching, then it will show me the sensitive data. So it seems to be not reloading at this stage. Let me just figure this out. So you can see it's when I cancel it, it says access denied. And if I were to successfully um, match my face using this tool here, It'll say here's some sensitive info because at this stage it has been successful. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my source code will be available on GitHub.